This video will contain spoilers from the world and story of Subnautica. Please beware. Now, the world of Subnautica contains many wonders for the players to explore, from various fauna that can attack you from around every corner, to intricate biomes and fantastic caves that you can delve into all throughout the game. However, there's one aspect that is only very rarely talked about, even though it creates a lot of what we nowadays explore within the biomes, and that is the plant life and the flora that inhabits planet 4546b. But luckily, all the mysteries hidden in those plants will be no more as today, after numerous requests, I will finally be covering the lore of the flora and plant life in Subnautica. That's right, we'll be taking a look at some of the plants in the game, I'll be telling you some interesting facts about them, and hopefully you'll come out of this video having learned something that you didn't know before. Now, to give this video a bit more structure and to also not make it one hour long, let's be honest, not all the plants in the game are interesting. Many of them are in fact purely decorative or can be harvested and planted again for consumption, which would not make for an entertaining video. So rather than spending all of your time on that, I in fact picked 10 different very interesting points about various plants in the game and we'll be going down the list. Now of course before you begin I have to warn you that this video will contain spoilers from the world and maybe story of Subnautica so if you don't have any of that spoiled and you haven't had the chance to play the game yet I strongly recommend you click off this video and come back to it later. Now with that out of the way get your survival knife ready make sure you have your magnifying glass with you and let's delve right in. And starting us off on our list are the ever-present acid mushrooms, a plant I'm sure most of you are very well familiar with, as it is extremely predominant in the state of shallows, a place where the player starts their game. Now, besides the fact that they explode when cut with a knife, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, the interesting part here is that we don't actually know exactly why they developed this protection. Perhaps they were being eradicated by a specific species, so they had to evolve this very dramatic and drastic way of protecting themselves in order to maintain the species. But either way, it clearly worked looking at their predominant numbers. Another interesting fact about them though is that they might have distant relatives in two other species on the planet. One being the deep shroom, which has lost some pigmentation because it is mostly found deeper in the game, which is actually a real life phenomenon. And also, these could be potentially a very distant relative to the jelly shrooms that can be found in the jelly caves, housing some of the nice pink crab snakes. And moving on from there right into the bulb zone and looking at the bulb bush, which on its own isn't that much of an interesting plant. However, what is interesting is the way it reproduces itself. Over the years, this plant has developed a very strong root system, which burrows into the rock that can be found below the surface, meaning that even if predators bump into it, it will not tip over. However, the small pustules that can be found on top of it will actually rub off as different animals swim around it, spreading themselves into the area, spawning more bulb bushes. Which in my opinion is definitely a very interesting way of interacting with the fauna in order for a piece of flora to reproduce itself. And moving right on from there onto the surface this time, and let's talk about the bulbo tree, which once again on its own isn't that much of an interesting plant, however the reason I put it on this list is that together with the grub basket and another surface plant, these are some of the only databank entries which actually reference the existence of insects in the game and the fact that this plant together with the grub basket will consume insects for survival, which is definitely interesting, especially because we never get to interact with insects in the game otherwise. And moving right on from there, we arrive to the Chinese potato plant, which is a source of food I'm sure you're familiar with if you've explored any of the Degassi sea bases. But what's interesting about this is, as the name suggests, it originally comes from the China territories, where supposedly synthetic foods are still kind of frowned upon, so they try to grow their natural foods as much as possible. And also interestingly enough, these were supposedly designed prior to the big expansion to the galaxy, meaning that the original recipe for these must be quite old by the time our player crashes on the planet. And moving on from there, let's very quickly talk about the ice stalk, which is a fairly common plant around the bulb zone, the crag fields, or the sparse reef. But what's interesting about it is that it is theorized that the ice, for the lack of a better word, that can be found all around it, are actually photosynthetic, and they are used to help the plant navigate and grow into different places, depending on how much light they are receiving. It could also be possible that these are used to measure other things, such as proximity of cave walls, 
or different environmental conditions that are happening around the plant. And moving on from there, let's talk about the fern plant. And I wouldn't be surprised if you've never heard about the fern plant, as it is in fact, aside from the large tree in the Lost River, the rarest flora species in the game. Now what's so fascinating about this is that while you can find it in a grow bed on the island, according to the PDA, it is not listed in any existing flora database and also does not seem to live in the wild on the planet, with its genetic code sharing some minor features with the other plant life but otherwise being unrelated. So it is very much possible that this plant was brought by the Degassi and has simply never been registered by any of the other trans governments prior to this expedition, which I think together with its rarity makes it extremely interesting. And moving on from there, let's talk about perhaps the most mesmerizing of all the plants so far, that being the membrane tree, which even according to the PDA is difficult to categorize, as it consists of multiple species of coral, which create a round membrane surrounding a much softer and more delicate inside area, which supposedly is considerably warmer and denser than anything outside of it and would most likely die if it were exposed to the surrounding environments. I'm sure some of you can already start seeing some references to the very famous event garden from Below Zero. And next up we have a very weird one and this is the purple pine cone which is an incredibly rare species of flora that can only really be found in a single place that being the northwestern mushroom forest. It is unscannable and seemingly has absolutely no properties, besides the fact that it drops a salt deposit, which really makes you think what the original purpose or idea behind a plant like this was. The only other thing we know about it is that it emits a very slight bioluminescent glow, so everything else is completely open for theorizing. And next up, a plant I'm sure all of you who finished the game are very familiar with, that being the Sea Crown, which is in fact one of the rarest plants in the game, being the third rarest type of any flora in the entirety of Subnautica, and also being a requirement for crafting the hatching enzymes to be able to successfully complete the main storyline of the game. Now what I think is very interesting about it is that looking at it closely, it does somewhat resemble the membrane tree, and also obviously besides its rarity, supposedly the large bladder-like sac contains a very large variety of bacterial species which help the plant break down countless complex compounds and draw them down into a root system. And finally, just to end this off, perhaps the most dangerous plant on this list is the infamous tiger plant, which can often be found growing on the backs of reef bags or around the crack field and the sparse reef. And I'm sure you all know that this plant will attack you if you get too close to it, but what you may not have known is that it is in fact capable of propelling spikes up to the speed of 10 meters per second if it needs to defend itself which is in fact incredibly fast, but even more interestingly perhaps, the plant doesn't have any carnivorous digestive organs, meaning that any herbivores or predators that are caught by it simply serve as warning for others that might come into the area, and as they slowly digest, they simply serve as fertilizer for the tiger plant overall. But with that, those are all of the facts I think you guys would be interested about the plant life in the game of Subnautica. Of course, there's a ton of plants and for this video, I went through all of them, picking out what I thought would be the most interesting aspects to discuss that you guys would enjoy. However, of course, if there is anything that I missed, or if there are any interesting facts you would like to share with others interested in this topic, please make sure to leave those down in the comments below. I would very much also like to read them. If you enjoyed the video, maybe consider leaving a like or subscribing. Both of those would be very much appreciated. And with that, I'm going to wish you a beautiful rest of today, and I'm going to see you all in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.